Hello and welcome to this module on response to intervention. My name is Renee Aziz and I am an independent educational consultant and owner of Virtuoso Education Consulting. I have the privilege of working with schools across the nation by providing de professional development trainings in the areas of response to intervention. Nature of the assessments that you are administering. There are two major types of assessments, summative and formative. Summative assessments provide us with a summary of what the student has learned after we've taught it. These are assessments typically like our district benchmark test, enter the unit test, they could even be your state standardized test, and those are just to name a few. Formative assessments, on the other hand, are assessments that inform our instruction because they provide continuous feedback about performance to not only the learner, but us as instructors. The most common type of formative assessment used in schools is curriculum-based measurement. Curriculum-based measurement, or CBM, is a common type of assessment that is used for screening and progress monitoring purposes. There's over 30 years of research around CBM, but CBM provides us with a quick and easy way to gather information about a student's progress, and it gives information to us as teachers that we can use to analyze student scores and adjust our instruction based on that student data. While both summative and formative assessments are needed, you cannot effectively implement RTI without the availability of that information and reflect on what the big picture of RTI might look like. First, in an RTI framework, students should be receiving high quality, research-based instruction across content areas in the general education setting. Further, school staff should be conducting universal screenings of both academics and behavior no less than three times a year to gauge student levels of proficiency. School staff should then use the data that they gather through these screenings to implement scientific research-based interventions to address the needs of students who have been identified as at risk. Those students that are receiving interventions should be progress monitored frequently and school staff should use that progress monitoring data and decision rules to determine if the interventions are effective or if the student is responding to the interventions. If the student is not responding to interventions, modifications are needed. Finally, a critical component of 